Hey, what's up? It's your girl Mocha Baby, and welcome back to my channel. If you are a newbie, welcome and thank you for following me and subscribing. If you've been rocking with me for a long, long time, hey, how you doing? You know how we get it popping on the channel. We all just want to be one big happy family. And this video is going to be about both the season premiere and episode 2 of One More Chance that is actually being broadcasted on the Zoo app. I watched the first episode when it premiered. I just hadn't, I kind of just didn't want to talk about it yet. But now I'm ready to dive in and get into everything that happened on that first show. So, starting off, we get, of course, we get the scene with Chance and his brother, Micah, a.k.a. Mike Mike. And I love the realism with that scene because, you know, they were talking about his brother real, which if you don't know, he died. I'm iffy on when, but I want to say it was between 2015 and 2016. He had cancer. He was just 33 when he passed. So definitely RIP to him. He did have stage 4 and, you know, that was really, really, really tragic. And, you know, Real and Chance were pretty much like two peas in a pod. Like, when we first met them, we met them together. We met them on uh, I Love New York first, you know, trying to get, you know, get her, you know. And then after that, after that, you know, they had their own show trying to look for love and then they had like this crack a dial d type adventure type show after that all on vh1 um and um it's just really really tragic the way that he had to go and we see we get a first scoop a first inside look on how chance is dealing with that he can't even really talk about his brother unless he's tearing up and you know that realism was just so beautiful to see and my heart really does hurt for him in that aspect okay now switching gears after that scene and you know he gets himself together we get the girls that are outside waiting it's 15 of them very, very interesting girls, to say the least. Uh, you know, his brother, Mike, Mike comes down and he welcomes them and, he, you know, he's talking to them and, you know, he's laying a couple of ground rules about, you know, don't mess up the house and this, that, and the third. And, you know, all the girls are just being their ratchet selves. It is ratchet television. So, um... No, he automatically called, it automatically two girls get called out before the show even begins. The first girl was the big girl, which I have a lot to say about her. I'm going to get to her in a minute. And then the other girl, I do think she is bisexual. Um, she had a wave cap on her head and he asked her to take it off. And when she took the, the uh, wave cap off her hair was not wavy her hair was not looking like good hair her hair was looking like beady beads and they definitely let her knew so we knew from this point on that these two brothers was gonna definitely be straight up comedians and chance has not changed one single bit since the last time that we saw him and then he called out the big girl. I can't remember was she first one he called out or the second. But at any rate, he called her out too. Because she was, you know, doing a lot of talking. And, you know, she had on that high green, yellowish, greenish wig on her head. 
and he called her a highlighter. And to me, that was hilarious as well. And which brings me to before I even go further into talking about what's going on on the show, I got to stop right here um, with because with my homegirl, the plus size chick. Um, I honestly thought she could have brought it way better than what she did. Being a member of the plus size community, I do feel like I have a right to talk about this. I mean, coming from a place, being a big girl myself, I've been a big girl all my life. I've never been under a size 14, so I do understand what it's like growing up in a society that looks at you as if you're not beautiful, if you are not, say, a 10, 8, or even lower than that. I say maybe sometimes a 2 to 4 if you are not real thin. So I definitely get that. So what my issue is with her coming into a show, knowing that you're probably going to be the only big girl on the show, you should bring it because you know they're already going to come at your neck because more than likely you're going to be the biggest one in the house and it's going to be all these other skinny girls thinking that they have more of a chance with you or they have more time, more get, uh, I can't talk, they have a better chance of getting on screen, getting more screen time because they think they look better than you just because they are smaller than you. So that automatically right there would make me say if I was to go on one of these shows, which I probably wouldn't because I'm far too nice, I'm far too quiet, and it just would not be a good fit for me personally. Um, but at any rate, that's just hypothetically speaking, if I were to go on one of these shows, I would bring it. I mean, first of all, let's talk about the dress that Shadi had on, the animal print lime green dress, it was a no for me. Uh, for nothing about that look right at all. The titties was hanging. The it just was absolutely not. And being a big girl that is well endowed up top, I have big titties myself. Certain things I just can't wear, and especially not on TV. And I'm not being approved because anybody that knows me know I will put something short on in a minute and I will show cleavage. Everybody knows me knows that. So that's not what this is about. But it is a certain way to do that, especially if you are on TV and you're supposed to be putting on repping for yourself as well as a whole community behind you. Started should have came up in there bad. She should have had, she could have had on a short dress. She could have even had, you know, some little tie ties joined with her. But first of all, she should have had on a bra. If you know you got big tie ties, and those kind of dresses don't work for us. They don't, not girls with big, they don't work for us. So we, you know, especially not without a bra. I know ain't no way in the world that's going to work for me. And it does it didn't work for her either. The dress was all wrong. And first of all, you have to be very careful with animal print anyway. Because animal print can, if not done right, it can come off trashy. And that's what she pretty much looked like. A ratchet, trashy mix. And then let's get to the hair. The hair was absolutely too much. And this is coming from somebody who loves to wear all kinds of different color hair. I mean, I got green hair on right now, but it's not highlighter green hair. Because um, it was a wig that she had on later in the show that I did. Like I said, okay, I can get with it because she's a nice looking girl. She's beautiful. But she just was not representing at all. Okay, so now... I'm going to fast forward. We get in the house. You know, they meet Chance. They've been met Chance. And, you know, he tells them to go pick their room and stuff. And, you know, first thing we notice is that it looks like girls are going to be sharing a bed. 
and this is where the first altercation happens by a very interesting character and the plus size chick on the show um it was at the time he didn't have a they didn't gave him his name yet but you know we definitely know that he is a transgender male or a cross dresser well transgender woman or a cross dresser dressing like a woman we know but he identifies himself as a woman and the plus size chick you know he automatically he started talking about her weight and saying that she was going to break the bread and they got the fighting and then the fighter chick got the fighting with another chick and we already this is already set in the tone pretty much for how the rest of the episode is going to go so after this chance starts giving out names to all the girls the funniest name to me was bdb oh <laughs> just because of the whole hair situation like if it was me like charlotte why you did not brush your hair why you came on this show with your hair looking all nebbin like that like if you know that this man is a fool he gonna call you out on national tv there is no way you should have came up in there half stepping like that. And then, um, the name that he gave the transgender female, um, Mangina, I fell out laughing at that. That, to me, was hilarious. That whole scenario is hilarious okay and then um let's see if I think it's just any other names that stood out to me not really it was the moment where the chick you know pop popped her coochie in his face and he didn't like that too much um kind of cute chick I can't remember his name I mean not his her name at this time but um I'm going to get their names together. I know about like 10 of them, but it's like five of them that I just can't place their names for the life of me. Um, let's see. And then, okay, then the other part that was interesting to me was it's this girl with this real strong draw on. Like very, very strong. But everywhere else she looks like a woman, you know, banging body, bad. She's bad. If you're going by her body, she is a baddie. But he questions whether or not she is a man or was born a man. And I I could be wrong, but I don't know. I think maybe she just has a strong jawline because I have met girls that, you know, were cute, but had a strong jawline like that. So, I mean, if I was her and I was really a girl, I would be upset about that. Like, how this dude's talking about I'm a man? Um, and let's see. Before I get to the end of the episode, I gotta say something about man Gina. Oh, uh, Male Gina's whole persona to me is very, very interesting. And it is wow that he is on a dating show looking for love with a man. I mean, this is the first time I think we have ever seen this in this kind of show. And that makes it, you know, it kind of blows the mind a little bit to see that. Um, we definitely have seen Chance say that he's not with that on several occasions as man Gina has tried to push up on him. I think his hands were kind of tied with that whole thing about, especially with everything going in the own world about discrimination and division. I think their hands were kind of a bit tied with that situation. But I will say since they did put him on the show, regardless of how I may feel about it or anybody else may feel about it, he is on the show and he sees himself as a woman. So she should be uh, gendered as a woman and not misgendered. 
and you know people kind of just get up off that leave it alone and take it for what it is uh, moving on then to the end of the show um it was two fights the first fight broke out in the kitchen everybody was in there having a good time taking shots drinking and man Jana comes in and now we know that the, the uh, beautiful girl, beautiful big girl, is Roly Poly Snack Mill, which, by the way, I hate that name. I don't know why he had to call her Roly Poly just because she be like, why you couldn't just say snacks? Or uh, you couldn't just say meal? Or snack meal? Why you had to put the Roly Poly on it? That's so good. Ugh. That's just... <sighs> but moving on, getting back to what I was saying... Um, man, Jonna walks in and a fight starts. Um, I do believe that, uh, Snacks Meal, because I'm not going to say Roly Poly, because to me that's, I don't like it. Snacks Meal already probably had her ass up on her back from earlier when he attacked her about her weight. And see, me being a person that is a little bit heavier, that is a plus size person, I do understand that I probably would have still been mad too. So, she decided that, you know, she was going to get it popping and start, you know, start some, start doing this right here. And that's pretty much what she did. And, you know, things went out of control. Glasses flying, this flying, that flying. And it hit, you know, somebody. And then, you know, things getting torn up. And, you know, this uh, transgender woman, but, you know... Right, he still has his junk, so they still, you know, saying that he's a man in here fighting these women, basically. I think it was about five of them. Um, that, to me, was ratchet as hell. Um, it's definitely, like, why do we have to act like that on TV? I'm all for having a good time. I know it was going to be a little ratchet. I expected that. I mean, it's on the Zeus app for crying out loud. It is chance. I do totally get that. But at the same time, the first show in, and y'all already going this hard at each other's neck. Like, it's supposed to build until that point. Not the first show, y'all. Come on. I mean, they don't get up that acting like a bunch of animals already. Wait goodness and so that's going on the chance comes down there and him and his brother and they break it up yada yada blah 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 and then as he's dealing with that another fight starts and this leads into the second episode which doesn't really add much to the first one it really kind of kind of just deals kind of ties everything up and deals with that but getting to the second fight it was between the older foreign lady in the house grandmama and the uh young the younger chick i think it was secret no not secret uh i can't remember her name but between them two cute light skin curly hair chick um between those two and the fight to me in my opinion was stupid it was a, the older lady grandmama was playing classical music on the computer and she doesn't like she call it the boom boom music and the younger girls don't like the classical music all they want to do is twerk and shake their tail feather and uh all she wanted you knew is play her classical music so they got into it about that calling each other all kind of bitches and this and that and the third and on and so forth and it escalated to the point chance came in there he had to break them up and me personally, I see both sides. I feel like both sides could be more open-minded as far as Grandma Ma. She could like her classical music and stuff, but she can be more open to the boom boom music, as she says, because she's got to recognize that she is in the house with younger people that have more different interests than she do and then the younger girl to me which was completely disrespectful because you're supposed to respect your elders and not be calling them all kind of bees and natures and this and that and um especially not about something so stupid like music and um 
you know, she could be more open-minded as well. And, you know, listen to the class community. I mean, the very least, even if you don't like it, you could have just humored her. And, you know, then it would have been that. They could have, you know, they made that more than what it should have been, in my opinion. Because to me, it's nothing wrong with being cultured and liking different things. You can like trap music. You can like classical music. You can like gospel pop. You can like the twerk. You can like do all these different things. To me, it's, you know, a being a well-rounded individual. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so then as the episode goes on, Chance is, you know, thinking about, do he want to let them all go? Do he really want to do this? But of course, you know, he does. And he gives everybody another chance playing games being funny uh with a couple of them one being snap meal one being with bdb telling them he was gonna let them go but um he did keep them and to mention bdb uh the whole kiss thing was you know hilarious because he said that her breath stank like he had to stop and go and garbage his mouth out because he said that her breath was just nasty and he wasn't with it at all. And me, if I'm going to kiss somebody, I'm going to make sure I got the Tic Tacs, the gum, whatever in my mouth. You know, because, you know, sometimes even if you brush your teeth, you might eat something and it gets on your breath. Or sometimes if you're nervous, it might release a chemical reaction and make your breath smell funky. So you got to prepare for that if you know you're going to be up here kissing on somebody. So I fell out with that moment and then um it was another kiss that he act like he enjoyed. Um let's see. And then after elimination, that pretty much was it for episode one and two. So now we're waiting on episode three when we're really gonna start getting into the meat of things and really you know get the competition going and kind of open it up a bit after all the drama that was the first two episodes and with that i'm going to stop this video right here if you are not subscribed to me please do so by hitting the red box i will appreciate it and i thank you in advance if you would like notifications Hit the red bell as well to get notified every time I make a video. I had to get a sip of that. That is so good, y'all. But back to what I was saying, every time I make a video, you can personalize it where you get notified when I get when I do certain videos, or if you want to get notified. When I do all my videos, you can customize it that way as well. I look forward to seeing where this show goes. Uh, on Sunday night, I will review episode 3 sometime next week. And as always, stay blessed, stay fly, and may angels be encamped around and about you. Later!